So let, let's give an official welcome to this man of God, Pastor Marco Garcia. Glad to be here. Thank God for you. Now, that, that clip we saw, that, that was one of your Stop the Violence campaigns in San Bernardino, in the right. Talk to me a little bit about that, the seed that God gave you, and what's actually happening. It's absolutely outstanding. You know, there, there's so much need right now in the inner cities. There's a lot of violence, gang banging. Yeah. There's a lot, of, a lot of families that are broken, moms, dads right now that are hooked on drugs themselves, yeah. um, parents that are in prison. The, this is their reality. Yes. And on top of it, there's a lot of poverty. A lot of these kids are dropping out of school. 50% of the kids in our inner cities are dropping out of school. Yeah. So they're surrounded with hopelessness. You know, there, there was a time that there was a lot of murders in our city, and it's still inner cities are known for a lot of gang violence, drive-by shootings. And there was a night that I, I was just praying to go, God, you know, I really want to make a difference. Yeah. What can we do as a church? And he gave me the idea that we should need to start a Stop the Violence campaign. Okay. And he told me what he wanted us to do is go to the streets, knock on doors, find out what the needs of the people are, and just invite them for a big block party. Wow. So we invited all the kids. We invited the neighborhood. We invited the gang members. We invited yeah. the drug dealers. We invited the prostitutes. We invited everybody. I love it. I and love it. and love how we got them out there wasn't just inviting them. We found out what their needs were, and yeah. we found out that they were hungry. So we promised them that we'd have a bag of groceries if they show up. Yeah. We promised the kids that we'd have some cotton candy and, and some snow cones for them, and we'd have some giveaways. And to our surprise, and I, it's just when God wants to do something, it's always yeah. bigger than you could ever imagine. Absolutely. So now in our last stop, the violence campaign, and we're talking about neighborhoods where people are scared to walk outside their doors. They came out. We had right around 3,000 people wow, wow. from the neighborhood show up right there, not in church but show up right there on the streets of San Bernardino. Come on, we can praise God better than that for that. That's awesome. yeah. you, know, you know, we were talking, we were talking downstairs uh, just before we came up, and you were talking about, you know, when, when you think, you know, if you live in Southern California, when you think San Bernardino, you don't necessarily think of San Bernardino as the inner city. Yeah. But you were talking about various statistics that are going on there. Uh, and, and things that are happening, things that, that, you know, people don't really realize. You said that San Bernardino, that county, talk a little bit about that and, and why the Spirit of God is motivating you in this You way. know, one of the things that Jesus prioritized were the poor. Yeah. When he comes out of the wilderness, he's tempted for 40 days, tempted by the devil, and he opens the book of Isaiah, Isaiah and he says, I've been anointed to preach the good news to the poor. Yes, sir. On, and when he preaches a sermon on the mount, he, first thing he mentions are blessed are the poor in spirit. Right. So he continues going to the poor. Yes. Then he, as we look in Matthew 25, when we're talking about the day of judgment, that he says, well, you've done to the least of them, you've done unto me. Right. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. Yes. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. Yes. And I think what's happened with the church overall, we've almost forgotten about the poor. We've been so focused on our personal development yeah. that we've forgotten about the mission of God, yeah. the heart of God. Yeah. So our city, and it just represents um, a lot of cities and a lot of inner cities, there's a lot of poverty. Yes. People are not only spiritually hungry because their family is falling apart, they have no hope, they're, they're now second and third generation drug addicts, gang bangers. People are dying in their neighborhoods. I, I would say this, that our inner cities right now are the big, one of the biggest Biggest mission, mission fields feels. right now in the world. No doubt about it. And we're missing it. There's no doubt we're about missing it. it. And there's no doubt about it. The harvest is right. And why why does God say bless are the poor in spirit? Why are why does he say focus on the poor? Because the poor are rich in something. Yeah. They're rich in faith. That's what the Bible says. And since says. they're rich in faith, they realize they need God. God says, go to the people that realize they need, need me. Yeah. Tell them I love them. Tell them I'm their hope. Tell them I'll deliver. Tell them I'll give them some hope. Yeah. And they're not fighting it. You know, we're not. Wait, 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 wait. wait. They're not fighting. They're not fighting so, the so message of the gospel. And you preach the gospel 
They're not fighting it. No, they're not fighting yeah. it. Yeah. They're not fighting it because they realize they need help. Yes, sir. See, yeah. we don't, we're not running into atheists, agnostics on the streets. Right. We're running into someone that's demon, dealing with demon oppression. Yeah. They're struggling. These, these, these are people that are trying to, to get, you know, sound doctrine and arguing that they want the raw message of the gospel. They want the power. They want hope. Yeah. They want hope. And, and the message that we're bringing is that we love you. And we understand this, that if I say I love you, then I'm concerned about you. It's not just say I love you because we have a lot of rhetoric. Right. You know, it's easy something. to say I love you, my brother, and, but they're in need and they're hungry. Yeah. Then it's our responsibility, maybe before we even preach the gospel, to just give a gospel of love. Yeah. That, and the gospel of love is love in yeah. action, having yeah. some faith with this thing. Yeah. So people are hungry. Yeah. You know, Right now in San Bernardino, and that was a question, right now 50% of the people in San Bernardino right now are in government assistance. 50%. 50%. Now, the, uh, who knew that? Okay, this is what I'm saying. Yeah. Go. And, and right now <laughs> San, San Bernardino is the second poorest large city in the country right behind Detroit. S San Bernardino, California. San Bernardino, California. Is the second Poorest, poorest, large city. Now, he was sharing this with me downstairs, and this is astounding to me. Go ahead. And, and, and actually, the Inland Empire is the poorest area in the whole country. Now, that I did know. But when you told me that San Bernardino, 50%, 50%. Yes. So, so when you found this out, when the Spirit of the Lord began to, God has called you to pastor, to, to, to raise up a work in this area. When you found this out, your first response was, I can do something about this. We could do with something about God. it. And, yeah. and God begins, see, as, as soon as you have the heart of God and you get compassion or passion for what God's passionate about, yeah, yeah. then he'll give you a vision yeah. and he'll give you a plan. Yeah. I believe that every church in America can be filled, yes, sir. overflowing yes, sir. with the power of God. Yeah. But we're going to have to learn how to relate to the hurting and broken again. I think we've become professional churchgoers. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. But we're yeah, not yeah, professional yeah. lovers. We're wow. not professional soul wow. winners. But we're professionals wow. that really focusing on ourselves. <laughs> uh, I, I, they, they were clapping. I want to make sure you heard what the man of God said. He said, "We professional churchgoers, but not professional lovers." Right. And 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 what you're doing is reaching out in this inner city with love, and people are really responding to it. Tell me this, as you as you as you minister this gospel of grace, as you demonstrate the love of God, what is surprising you most of all in what you're seeing happen? Because well, the church is growing, flourishing, well, the people are on the, fire. The surprise, first of all, is it doesn't matter how bad that gangbanger is, that drug dealer is, he's a person like me and you that's hurting. Yeah. And everything else is a facade. Yeah. And once they know, they have to get a message. They have to get a message, I love you and God loves you. Yeah. Once they get that message, they open up, they receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Yeah. And we're dealing with people that aren't church goers. They've never been in church. They don't know nothing about God, but they, they know something real. Yeah. yeah. And you can't come with some fake stuff. You can't come with just some preaching. You right. got, they got to know this is real. That's right. And once they know it's real, they receive Jesus Christ. They get set free, and this is what happens. They become loyal to yeah. God, yeah. loyal to the work of God, yeah. and they become amazing yeah. soul winners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it, it's so awesome, Pastor Garcia, when you, you know, when you look at the ministry of Jesus, both of the times, you know, and, and the, the feeding of the multitude is not just something that's repeated in the gospel. Jesus did this twice, right. two separate occasions. And on two separate occasions, in both of those instances, the, the, the concept of what the disciples were going to do with the hungry and the poor was something that they couldn't figure out. Right. And Jesus had to say, no, you do it. Right. I'm sitting here and I'm listening to you and I, I just want to bring this, this, this to bear because right now we're in a nation where the government is shut down. One of the reasons I believe the government is shut down is because the government has been attempting to do the job that the church is supposed right. to do. Right. And, that, and that is... And that is feed the hungry, and I'm gonna tell, clothe yeah, the naked, right. minister to the end. Right. Go ahead. And, and, and the issue we're running into is if we don't watch it, the church is dependent on the government. 
Say that again. Okay, the church is dependent on the government. Now, now this is the big deal. Yeah, man. Because when God calls you to do a work, we must Keep depend God. on God yes, because man. the enemy wants to tie up our ministry. Absolutely right. And that's one of the great, that's one of the great, great challenges. Years ago, I was reading the, the account of, of, the, of the multiplying of the loaves and fishes. And Jesus asked the question, where? Where are we going to get food? The disciples were thinking about how much they needed. And they responded, well, this much would not be enough. That much would not be enough. But that wasn't Jesus' question. Jesus' question is, where are you going to get it? We're concerned about how much it costs. And what we need to be knowing is it's going to come from God. Right. He's going to provide right. it. Right. Yeah. He wants right. us to make sure. Right. Right. And I want to talk right. to you pastors right. because you know, in our ministry, we, we have outreaches to the homeless outreach. We, we, we are connected with the Union Rescue Mission. We do things uh, in the inner city all the time. And people wonder, you know, every time we do it, where is it going to come from? I tell you what, when you step out in faith and you believe God to right. minister right. to the people, he will provide supernaturally. Somebody. He will bring stuff from places you don't know. I have never, none of the things that we've ever done in all these years reaching out in that area, have we been, uh, had, did we have the no. money to do it no. when we started to do it? But right. once it was over, we were scratching our heads wondering, well, how did this happen? The whole idea is when we're ministering to the hurting and the broken, we get just raw back to the grassroots of Christianity, yeah. that God, he says, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is all about reaching people. And after we take off our suits, yeah. it's time to put back our jeans, get our, 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 our shoes out there, get our sneakers, and go hit those streets. And yeah. he, this is what Jesus said. He goes, go to the highways and byways and invite the poor. Yeah. The crippled, the lame, the blind. That my he goes, house, invite, that my house may, be filled. may be filled. Yeah. And see, and when we invite them and we love them and we care for them, there's somebody that comes with them and it's Jesus Christ yeah. himself. Because what you've done to them, you've done unto me. Woo! And now the kingdom That's of heaven man, is brother. in our churches. The power of God shows up. The healing, the deliverance, and everything we're trying to get comes in with them. So when I look at a poor person and I look at someone struggling, Good. they're a treasure. Yeah. Yeah. They're a treasure of God. They're yeah. valuable to God. Yeah. And the only way to reach them is to go lower than them. And this is the struggle we're having is if we become so haughty and so prideful, yeah. we've forgotten where we've come from. Yeah. Yeah. So the majority of Christians don't know how to minister to a sinner anymore because they think they're better than the sinner and they can't relate to them. And you're not going to get to him with a whole bunch of hallelujahs and amens and God right. bless me and I, right. I'm not stressed anymore, too stressed right. to be blessed. All that stuff, we, those are just cliches. We need some love. We need the power of God. And that's what's going to change our lives. Yeah! Man, you know, it, it, is, it is absolutely outstanding to see what happens when you actually simply do what Jesus it's said simple. to do. You know, it's not, it's not tough. And, and here I'm, I'm talking to a man who's not trying to rearrange the furniture of a church. He's not, trying to, he's not trying to get people from one thing to another. He's going out into the highways and the hedges like Jesus said and compelling them to come. And God is prospering your work. Yes. He's causing you to expand on the right hand, on, on the left. What would you say to a pastor, what would you say to a man of God who's saying, listen, Pastor Marco, I, I hear what you're saying, brother, but you know, I've, I've tried this, I've tried that, I've tried the other thing. doesn't seem to be working for me. What would you say to that, that pastor? What would you say to him? I, I, would tell, I would tell that pastor that start small, but start with the right heart. Yeah. We, we can't start a church just trying to grow. We got to start a church Jesus. with one soul at a time, yeah. loving people, and God's going to cause the growth. We got to love some people, and then God's going to say, this is a place that I can send my people to be taken care of and loved because they have the right heart. And as we're faithful with that, right now, we're the number one food pantry in Southern California. I mean, that means we're feeding more people right now than the government. Right. That, we're feeding 144,000 people a year, over a million pounds of food. And who's buying the food? We're buying the food. They said, where does the money come from? You know where the money comes from? People that have been changed, transformed, lives transformed. We're not getting any government assistance. These are people. I want you to, I want you to hear this. 
I want you to hear this. Because you say you're not getting any we government have never assistance. never got a dime of See, the government and, assistance. And we never have either. And God will do that if you will step out in faith and believe him for so, so, so you, you, give me those numbers again. You're feeding how many people? 144,000 a year, face to face. And now our church has grown so much. And, and it's being, I mean, everybody in Inland Empire is hearing about us. Right now, we're getting ready to launch out into 13 services a week. I mean, right now, we're, we're packed out. We're looking yeah. for next level of growth. And, and it's not because, because this next level of what God's going to do, it's going to be through the church. Yeah. It's not going to be through superstar preachers. That's right. It's not going to be right. around a person. That's right. It's going to, the spirit of God is going to move. He's going to get glorified. What he's he's going to show up and he's going to attract. Pastor Marco Garcia, the founding pastor of the Way World Outreach Ministries in San Bernardino, California. This man of God is doing a tremendous work there. And I want to just say thank you, not only for thank your you heart, perfect. for your vision, but for your faith and coming and sharing with us. Let's thank God once again for Pastor Marco Garcia. God bless you, man. Thank God for you. It's an honor to meet you.